Good afternoon, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Our gathering song is hymn number 192, Praise to the Lord, 192.
To understand what Jesus is getting at, I think, and it is a little difficult on the surface. In fact, on the surface reading, it's too easy just to gloss over it. But when we deep, dig a little more deeply into it, I think that we begin to understand his purpose in these words and why Matthew recorded them for us. But in order to find the reasoning behind Jesus' words, we must first, of course, remember what our goal in this life is, because I suggest that Jesus' words are the means to obtaining or attaining that goal. For that is what Jesus directs us to. Jesus is directing us to the means by which we may obtain the soul's greatest desire, and it is true of all people in all times and in all places, that the soul's deep desire is to find peace and tranquility, to live in that certainty of peace and tranquility, and for all the striving in this life and for all the accumulation of wealth and knowledge and wisdom or whatever it is that we achieve in this world, all of it leads us to only one final destination as people of faith. And that final destination is heaven itself. And what is it that we will encounter there in heaven? We will encounter harmony and peace we will encounter the absence of strife. We will encounter a state of being where God is honored and praised at all time by all present. It will be the place where the glory of God extends outward to a love for all his creatures. And in the same manner as God loves them, so too we also as members of God's household in heaven, will also love them as God loves them. There in God's presence is found that true and that lasting peace and freedom that the human heart seeks and desires. It seems to me that Jesus is directing us to live now, therefore, in such a manner as though we are already there where our heart desires to be. How does one do that? I suggest by living in a manner on a daily basis that fulfills all the precepts and all the commands that God has given to us, but in those two very succinct commands that Jesus himself articulated from the law itself, that we are to love God wholly, completely, and that we are to love our neighbor as ourself. That that love that we expect to have from God and that we will experience for eternity in heaven is the same love that God has given to us and that we are to extend to all people. But it takes humility. All the intellect in the world will not help us to understand that depth of our faith. What is required, though, is a wisdom that is born out of humility. And this humility, of which Jesus is, of course, the model of meekness, sees the one around us, which we call our neighbor, as already a fellow associate with us in heaven for all eternity. And there are plenty of people that you and I know that it's very difficult to have that attitude about, isn't it? And that is especially the case if the one that comes to mind 
the most difficult person in your life seems to be bound for a destiny other, opposite of heaven itself. And Jesus' command, therefore, is one that brings us to understand this depth of connection we have with all people. And I also suggest that his yoke, which always, by the way, always, yokes always symbolize authority. His authority over us binds us to this burden, which is a manner of life, a way of living, that the meek and the humble of heart have the interior strength to actually live it out because it isn't easy. It takes the humility and the meekness of heart to actually do what Jesus asks us to do. It takes real effort. Because our inclination as human beings is always toward pride. And whenever our pride is offended, then we want retribution, we want to get payback. We want to have some kind of action that will somehow in our own minds rectify and justify this, this offense that has been an offense ultimately against our pride. And that is often what people will call fairness or justice. Not divine justice, but that justice that makes it even for me. But Jesus' way is a more difficult and yet a more freeing and a way that gives us peace and solicitude in this life as well as the life to come. You see, if I'm somebody who does not want to be slandered, and I think that would be all of us, and we should not be ones who slandered others. Irrespective of the fact that people may slander us, we still should be persons who do not return the offense to the other. If I am someone who does not want to be lied to, and I suggest that to all of us, then I should not be one who lies. If I want to be treated kindly, should I not also treat kindly everyone I meet, whether or not they treat me kindly? If I want to be treated fairly, if I want to be shown respect, and I too should be tr show respect and treat others fairly as well. If you don't like drivers cutting you off when you go down the highway, you should not be one who cuts drivers off when you go down the highway. If you don't like people being rude to you and inconsiderate, then neither should we be rude or inconsiderate. You see, regardless of how people actually treat us, we are called to a standard that says, I won't reciprocate. Whether people show me hospitality or not, I am still obliged to show hospitality because I value hospitality and I like it when it's given to me. If I seek compassion from others, then I too should be one who is compassionate. You see, what Jesus sets before us as the condition of being his disciple is such a very, very high standard of conduct that one go, that goes far beyond the mere outward observance of commands. It goes far beyond simply the letter and seeks to actually live out the inner meaning and the very purpose of all of God's desire and commands for us. This is, I think, the burden. This is the yoke. Because it is the way, finally, to find peace, to experience forgiveness in this life, and to experience that joy in the life to come. But as Jesus clearly understood, it takes meekness and humility which is why Jesus, as we read his life and hear the gospel every week, we encounter the one who alone is the perfect model of meekness and humility 
and justice and of love. And he becomes for us the model whom we are called upon to follow closely and to live our lives as he wants us to live them in a way that models the way he interacted and lived with the people that he encountered while on this earth. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, the Lord offer our prayer to Almighty God for the Church, the world, and for all people. For our Holy Father Francis, our Bishop Peter, our Pastor Father Gary, and for all who seek to bring the merciful love of the gentle shepherd to those they serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our hearts, homes, cities, and between nations, for all who put their lives at risk to protect those in danger and most vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those the Lord is calling to church vocations, for all discerning, and for our seminarians, Joe, Mike, and Dan, and their formation for the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those visiting us today, May they leave this celebration refreshed, inspired, and feeling welcome among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our departed relatives, friends, and benefactors, and especially for the deceased of our parish family, for whom this Holy Mass is offered today, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the needs of one another, and for all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord Holy Father, with humility of heart and a desire always to please you, we offer these prayers that you may hear them and grant those things that we ask in accord with your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join together in singing number 430, Be Not Afraid.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always, and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. So with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. Refrain number four, refrain number four. Greatest. 
least and the least, we come to your feast, we come to your feast, with the fruit of our lands and the work of our hands, we come to your feast. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing number 421, I Sing the Mighty Power of God.